Hey guys, it's me, and I want to talk to you about Instagram. So obviously Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and all these places online can be an amazing resource for learning new vocabulary, for making new friends, for talking to people, uh, practicing your skills. Honestly, the ability to learn and to improve and to speak, it's an amazing resource. But today I want to talk just a little bit about something that worries me a little bit as somebody who teaches English. So I think it's amazing that you guys are subscribing to YouTube channels and liking Instagram pages and everything to make English a part of your life. I think that's really amazing. But recently I've noticed on Instagram especially that there are a lot of pages that post uh, English vocabulary, English uh, sentences and translation exercises and stuff like that. But they are incorrect with the English that they're teaching you and I actually was speaking to some other teachers on YouTube too and they also really agree with me that they see more and more people teaching English but actually teaching the wrong thing or the incorrect thing and I'm not here to talk about a particular account and I'm not here to say anything bad about those people you know clearly they want to teach English to people and they want to help people and it's an amazing thing and I don't believe that you have to be perfectly fluent or perfectly you know or to have a, a, a native level of English to be able to teach it or to share it but I have seen some stuff today that's a little bit like weird and not really good for somebody who's learning English to repeat or to learn. So in the most respectful way I can, I'm going to show you how and why and hopefully that will kind of teach you to just be very careful about where you're learning English and who with. Okay, so I have hidden any information that shows where this account came from because it's not my intention to be nasty about somebody or about their level of English, okay? So, <laughs> I won't tell you where this is from. Let's just take a look at this image and let's really analyse it and see if it's co actually correct in what it's saying. So, the title is Stop Saying Very and, you know, I see a lot of videos like this on YouTube especially, you know, videos with the title Stop Saying Very, Say This perfectly fine uh, way to learn new vocabulary. But for example, in this image, as you'll see, this one says, instead of very painful, st say excruciating. Now, the thing is with finding a synonym for certain phrases or words is that some synonyms are very, very precise. And I'll explain how that's not useful because, for example, in this case, yeah, we can say excruciating for very painful. However, very painful to me is like when I kick the bed, okay? I kick the bed and it takes my breath away and I'm like, oh, that really hurt, okay? That's very painful, but it's not excruciating. Excruciating is like in the saw movies, when they're sawing off someone's leg. <laughs> the actual meaning of the word excruciating is when something is so painful that you can't bear it. You know, in some instances, you would prefer to be dead than to feel the pain. So excruciating is very, very severe pain. I mean, it's, it's, it's more than very painful. Now the next one, we have very pale. And we could, of course, uh, talk about somebody's skin. They're very pale. But to use the word ashen, ashen is like when somebody sees a ghost or somebody sees a dead body, okay? When they lose all of the blood in their body, they, it completely leaves their face and you see somebody go really, really white, okay? That's ashen. It's like an unhealthy white. We don't generally use ashen to say very pale. I mean, somebody can be pale because they saw something bad, but when we say ashen, it's like, you know, when somebody loses their circulation or their blood because they've seen something so shocking. After that, we have very perfect. And instead of very perfect, you can say flawless. Well, first of all, we don't say very perfect. Something is 
perfect. That means it's 100% right. You know, it can't get better than perfect. So therefore you can't use very perfect. You just don't need to use it. Perfect is the best that it can be. So with very perfect, they say you could say flawless. I mean, sure. We could say that. But flawless to me is something that's more like, you know, there's no mistakes or there's no errors. It's a good synonym for very perfect. But I don't know, for some reason this feels weird to me and I think mainly because we just don't say very perfect and therefore flawless isn't really a synonym of perfect. And what's more is flawless kind of feels like it's describing the fact that something doesn't have any marks or dirt on it. Perfect would be more like for people I guess and flawless would be more for kind of objects. That one's kind of very very difficult actually. So let's move on to the next one. So very poor. Now very poor. We have to be very careful when we talk about somebody being poor in English because it's rude and it can be very insensitive to say that somebody is very poor. I mean, you're not very likely to say that to somebody's face. When we talk about being poor, we just, well, to say destitute, um, destitute is a completely different level of poor. I mean, destitute means you have nothing. And we use this word very, very commonly to refer to people who have been, for example, in a hurricane or an earthquake and they've lost everything. So they once had it, but they don't have it anymore. And normally because of a, a tragic event or a disaster. In that case, if somebody loses their house in an earthquake or, or a hurricane, you won't say, oh, well, they've lost their house. They're very poor now. No, they're not poor. They have nothing. They are destitute. Destitute is, you know, it's the worst that you can possibly be. No, you can say somebody's very poor because they don't have a lot of money or they don't have a lot of means, but it does not mean that they're destitute. And there's a very big difference between being very poor or poor and destitute. After that, we have very powerful. They say, instead say, compelling. I mean, Yes, I actually, I, I agree with that. I mean, we could say um, his speech was very powerful and therefore it was compelling. So compelling is like, it draws your attention. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good replacement for sure. So I'm gonna stop there with that one image because I think it's enough, but I just, you know, want you to see that sometimes people are posting this stuff on Instagram or whatever, and it's not being taught in the right context and you're not learning the, the subtleties of the language and you're not learning the intricacies. And I think it doesn't help to learn words in this way because there is no point in learning an advanced word if you don't use it in the right way. I mean, I can say that my family is destitute, but that's not what I want to say. I'm not saying that my family have nothing or they've lost everything because of a natural disaster. I'm just saying they don't have a lot of money. There is a difference between uh, a word and a synonym for that word. There's a reason why we have the word poor and the word destitute, okay? Because they mean different things. And I don't want you to, to learn the wrong ones and to not explain yourself correctly. All I'm saying is be very careful with the accounts that you're following, with the people that you're listening to because sometimes they're not always correct and I don't want you to learn the wrong English, that's all. I think I'm gonna do a second video on another image that I found just because you're gonna learn from the mistakes that people are making, especially in an exam, you don't wanna do that. So guys, I hope you like this video. Of course, click like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.